Right, okay, so these four elements. So this is on screen. All of this needs to be available on screen. If you want to, you can make a little booklet up as well. If you want, but I mean, most games don't even come with that sort of stuff. The only thing that's in the booklet is all the phone numbers for the support, and that's about it, isn't it, these days? They don't, they don't even put what the controls are, which is what instruction booklets drifted into. Um, so all of this info has to be available in the game. Okay? Obviously, you can't have an instruction page that tells you how to start the game because you, it should be on the screen. You know, a button press to start, press A to start, whatever you're doing. Okay, so, so that one's a given. You must have something on screen that says, how do we start this bloody game? But the rest of it can be on a separate page, a separate scene. Um, now, I know Abdul's got this working, um, and it does work quite well. If you just create a new scene, and you can load a scene, and then you can load the original scene back up to go back to your main menu. That's the easiest way of doing this. But it must have these three elements. So how to control the character. So the basic, is it left, right? A bit, bit like what I asked you a lot um, when we all sat down one to one. How to play the game, what is the point of the game? If you've got a story in mind, you can put the story in there. Um, how you present this is up to you. It could just be a static page that you created in Fireworks or Photoshop. You could do some fancy scrolling text, Star Wars text, whatever you want to do. It's up to you. It doesn't have to be fancy. You're not going to get... It's got to be functional. All right? Um, so these two, yeah, just like a standard game. What are the controls? If you've got... You could do this a couple of ways. You could take, take screenshots of your game and then annotate that. You could create a video of your game if you wanted to play a video. Work out how to do a video in Unity. I don't think it's very hard. I didn't explain sound. Although we have had issues on certain machines with sound, very oddly. Don't know why that was. That was on Friday. Nobody couldn't get sound on these machines over here at all. Don't know why. Okay, so, yeah, it's got to have that. How you present that is up to you. I would, in my opinion, you could even do a hand-drawn sketch and scan it. Depends. It's up to you. The last one, FAQs and troubleshooters. These are the dumbass things. Okay, so someone says, I don't seem to be able to finish the game. And then you can say as the answer, have you gone to the exit? The car won't move. Have you tried driving, pressing the accelerator button, which you were told previously? Anything like that. Things to be aware of on FAQs. You could, like, ask about backups and say, like, um... You know, before you actually play it, back it up, because if it crashes, it could corrupt, blah, 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 that sort of stuff. All right, so as long as we've got all those elements, that will be enough for our user interface, apart from one extra thing that isn't on the checklist, but is mentioned in other places. The user interface. Okay, so if you've got a score, where is that going on screen? We need screenshots of it for the evidence for this assignment. All right, if you've got a timer, if you've got help, all those user interface elements that are in game, we need to make sure we have got screenshot evidence. They should be on your sketches. Okay, so the basic, the basic structure of this should just be like your start title screen or whatever it is. And it is important that when you hand your designs in that these things are in your designs. All right, what I, what I don't want to see is this magic uh, set of sketches that are for the game, and then all of a sudden you then submit a project that's got all this other stuff that isn't been designed. So they don't have to be mega. So the title screen could have help, and that goes off to an FAQ thing, and then you've got that little back thing or something. Which comes back. So you could show this in quite a nice little way on a sketch. Um, you could have. Is anyone having any options so you can change settings or anything like that? Difficulty or anything? Yeah, that's all right. Right. So you could have. Uh, it's hard enough. <laughs> it's easy because it breaks. Yeah. Well, there you go. You should look. Um, right. So we could have it. 
and how to play. Again, how you set this up is up to you. Okay, so you might have. Um, The main character thing, I don't know, I'm going to draw a character now, I don't know what it's going to be. Something like that. Three, five, there. Um, and you might have next or somewhere, I don't know, it's up to you. I don't think you can fit everything onto one page, that would be what I'd be thinking. I don't know, something like that. So you've got like an extra thing from the instructions that text you the story. I'll do this story the other way. Or it could be when you press start, that goes to your story. Okay, and then you go put a timer on it and then go off and play the game. It's up to you how you organise it. But this will be the first assignment that comes in. So we've done all like the preliminary stuff. This comes in before the design assignment finishes. Okay, because it's, it's basically like part of your design. But we will need to see screenshots. So it's important that by March time, we have built this element of the game. Even if your game's not working, not nowhere near finished, you can still build all this. Because you know what the mechanics of the game are, and that's really what we're trying to show on our way. Okay, anyone got any questions about that? Don't murder yourself doing this. You've got the coding element is really the game, isn't it? Okay, so yeah, you can impress me with some jazzy instructions page. If you, if you look at like Neo Geo games, every Neo Geo game has like an animated how to play, it tells you what all the buttons do. That would be awesome if you could do that, but you haven't got time. Okay, like I say, if you've got a game running, there's nothing to stop you screen capturing it and then using that on your how to play the game. And then annotating on top of it. You've got access to, um, what's it called? What? What's the Adobe Premiere? So you can subtitle anything, can't you? So you can easily do that if you wanted to. Do it on the D drive if you're going to do that because it makes massive video. I'd compress it as well. I wouldn't leave it as raw video. You know your multimedia ones, they're getting bigger, are they? Yeah. Oh, I bet they are. Yeah, so you could compress them. I've never looked at the video playback on Uni, but I'm assuming it's just a matter of dragging it onto a canvas and playing a video file. So. Right, okay, I'll upload that onto YouTube so you can refer back to it. It's not very complicated. Look at the checklist, but remember that we have got to worry about this bit. All the stuff. The UI on there. Health. Whatever. Whatever you've got. Some of you have got bullets and lives and things. Okay. All right. Cheers, everyone.